Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a chef's knife for an old friend. So today I'll be making a chef's knife as a wedding gift for my old friend Brad Davidorf and his lovely bride Julie. You wouldn't know Brad's face, but uh, you've heard his voice. He's a voiceover actor, voiceover guy, voiceover talent, whatever they call it. Uh, so when you hear the, the guy saying, today on an all new Dr. Oz, facelift or chemical peel, that's Brad. I'm using a piece of .09 inch S30V steel stock. I used to make chef's knives fairly thick, but I've gone thinner and thinner over the years because thinner knives cut better. Now this has implications for making the knives that I'll get into as I get deeper into the project. First things first. The first operation in knife making, for me anyway, is always drilling the holes in the handle. Now in this case, I designed the knife in a CAD program, which lays out the exact dimensions for those holes. Now, I won't be making it on my CNC machine, though I could, but I'll be using a mill with a DRO. For those of you who follow my videos, you'll know that sometimes I like to do really low to the ground type videos that only use hand tools or really simple tools. This isn't that. I'm just documenting how I do a one-off custom knife with the equipment that I have. If you want to duplicate this knife at home and you don't have a mill, which of course most people don't have, check out some of my other videos where I show alternative ways of drilling these holes. So from the plans that I've made, I know all the dimensions of these holes. So I'll be using the DRO, that's the digital readout, on my mill to dial in the hole locations. Incidentally, if you'd like to reference the plans for this build, I'll have them available to all my Patreon subscribers on my Patreon page. Click the link in the card and you can get access to that if you'd like to support the channel. Now I'm using what are known as Corby fasteners, which have a thin shank and thicker heads that screw into the handle and then are ground off flush with the handle. So to fit the Corbys, I'll be drilling a 187 thousandths hole, that's 3 sixteenths of an inch, which gives a little wiggle room. I really like Corby fasteners for custom type knives like this. They're mechanically rock solid and they look great when you're done. You can find them in stainless steel, brass, and aluminum from a variety of knife making supply places. Now the only disadvantage with Corby's is that they're fairly complicated and take a lot more work than most handle fasteners. Now I'll sketch out the knife on the blank. As you've seen, I've got plans and I could have laid this out extremely accurately with layout fluid and so on. You've probably seen me do that in some of my other videos, but honestly, I like tinkering with designs on the grinder depending on how they feel in my hand. So I'll sketch this very roughly and then go to the grinder. The next step is going to be beveling. So I'll use this little scribe to score a center line and that'll help me keep my bevels symmetrical from one side of the blade to the other. Now it's back to the grinder to bevel the edge. I get questions frequently from guys who are making chef's knives and having problems keeping the grind lines clean. Here's why. The thinner and wider you go with your knife, the harder it is to maintain good grind lines. There are a host of reasons for this but they all stem from the basic fact that a thin chef's knife requires a very, very shallow grind angle. After a certain point, it becomes nigh on to impossible not to run into minor grind problems. 
I'm going to be doing a whole video on this soon, so I won't get too deeply into the details of why that is, but suffice it to say that if you're having problems with super thin, super wide knives, like chef's knives, it's not because you're a moron. These things are just hard. I started with 40 grit ceramic, then moved to 60 grit, 120, and then an A300 Trizac. Those of you who watch me over the years know that chef's knives are not my thing, so I'm experimenting a little to see what belts I like for this particular geometry. For the handles, I'm using a wood found mostly in Texas called Bow Dark. The wood's also known as Bois Dark and Hedge Apple. It's very hard, very durable, and doesn't rot easily, so it's a popular fence post material in Texas. Now I'll go ahead and drill the handle scales. Same dimensions and hole sizes as the tang of the knife. Now there's a wrinkle here. The handle has a counter bore for the head of the fastener, which I drill using this step drill. I also employ a little of that annoyingly useful irritant known as math to figure out how deep the hole needs to be. Basically, you want to drill enough for the shank with just a little extra material left so that the fastener crushes this tiny lip of wood at the bottom of the counter bore, really locking the scales to the tang. I could just set a quill stop, but instead I'll use the DRO. Works fine either way. I'll make sure the scales are nice and flat. I've used a disc grinder for the preliminary flattening, but if you really want them dead flat, a little hand sanding will do the trick. Time to heat treat the blade. I'll wrap it in stainless steel tool wrap. No folks, aluminum foil won't hack it because it'll melt at these temperatures. Then I'll soak it at 1900 degrees in my heat treating oven for half an hour. I'm doing something a little different here. Normally I aim for S30V to end up around a Rockwell hardness of 60 or a hair under. But here I want a springy, flexible blade, so I'm willing to sacrifice a little in terms of hardness. So after hardening the blade, I'll temper it once at 600 degrees Fahrenheit, then do a cryo quench in liquid nitrogen, then another temper at 600. This will yield a Rockwell hardness in the 56 to 57 range. I've made chef's knives with quite different heat treats that would be much harder and hold an edge longer, but because this blade's fairly thin, I want it to be springy so there's no danger of snapping it in half. Now I'll smooth out the grind a little. At the end, my grind lines are okay, but not anything close to the standards I'd have on my production knives. Honestly, it's a real fight to get them right on a blade with this kind of geometry. I'm running the bevel at about one and a half degrees off axis on this knife. Most of my knives are in the four to five degree range, some even running up to six, which is just worlds of difference in terms of grinding difficulty. 
and it's not just the technical difficulty of maintaining a straight line, but any rolling or cupping of the belt, any unusually high spots on the abrasives, or just a number of other things are enough to cause problems with your grind that would never happen on the sort of steeper grind you'd find on most knives, hunting knives, or even slimmer kitchen knives. I'll finish the knife by giving it a quick go with a medium grit surface conditioning belt. This isn't a scotch Bright brand belt, but it's the same general idea made by Combat Abrasives. It gives you a nice, even matte finish all the way across the blade. You want to be careful not to get too gonzo on the tang though, or it'll round off the surface and leave gaps around the handle. I'll go ahead and kill two birds with one stone here. First, I'm test fitting the handles to make sure the fasteners line up. If they don't, it's redo time. But I'm also outlining the handle scales so I can trim them down on the bandsaw. Now it's time to secure the handles. Don't do like I did and forget to keep a second screwdriver handy. Corby fasteners work best when you tighten them on both sides using two screwdrivers. It worked out fine with one, but you're better off with two. Once the epoxy's cured, I'll finish up the handles. I'm doing most of the work with the grinder, but there's always a little bit of hand work involved to make it really feel comfortable. Finally, I'll sharpen it. There seems to be endless interest in how to sharpen knives, 
There are a million ways to do it, but if you're curious how I do it, typically I use my belt grinder starting at 120 or 220 grit, then moving to 320 or 400, then moving on to a stropping wheel that I show how to make in another video. If you're interested in that, by the way, here's a card. And I finish up about half an hour before I have to get dressed for the wedding, just enough time to take a few pictures, put it in a box, and jump in the shower. <laughs> Mazel tov, Brad. May you and your family enjoy your knife in good health for many, many nourishing meals and through good times and... Okay, now this is a knife channel. Enough treacly sentimentality. Now, knives. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!